morning. How y'all feeling today? Today is Sunday, fun day. We're just waking up this morning and we're about to get this breakfast started with a Into the Woods edition of Sunday Breakfast. And today we're going to make some pancakes, some eggs, and I got some sausage. But first, I'm about to make this coffee because I need my coffee. So I'm getting this pot of coffee going. So I'm putting that in the filter. The coffee of today is this Folgers Gourmet Supreme. It's a dark. I got about eight cups of water here. I've already poured some in. And I normally drink about one cup, but my kids like coffee too, especially Twan. So he'll actually get up and make him a cup of coffee. And right now he's asleep. But I know when he gets up, he's going to want some. <clears throat> so this is our normal routine on a Sunday. So right now it's about... 10 36 in the morning and this is about the typical time that we get up on sunday um and then i'll start cooking sometimes on sundays and i may have to go out to the store get some breakfast if i don't have it which is most of the time but i've gotten a lot better now where during the week i can just easily grab the things that i want to cook on the weekend and then that way if i Sunday come, I don't have to run out to the store because that actually does take a lot of my time is going to the store, trying to find something to eat. But today we already have something on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the sausage that I have already in the freezer. Normally don't use this sausage, but this is what we have today. We normally use the Bob Evans or the, um, uh, what is it? The Smithfield? One of those brands that's in the yellow pack. But those are really good. And I got some eggs. So let me grab these eggs out the refrigerator. But what are y'all eating for breakfast? Hmm? What's for breakfast today? And this is a big carton of eggs. So I normally cook about six eggs for us. So that's about five. Yes, I'm the one who puts the egg, empty containers back in the cart. <laughs> who else does this? Okay, so the first thing is first, you want to start off with the thing that's going to take the longest to cook, which is the sausage. So I'm going to go ahead and cook this sausage first. Okay, so we're going to start off with the sausage first. So normally... Daddy doesn't eat eggs, so he'll probably eat majority of all of these sausages. And the kids will eat pancakes and eggs. And I'll probably just eat pancakes and eggs too, because I really don't feel good. So I'm trying to, you know, muster up some energy so I can do this for you guys today. Come on over here, and this coffee is smelling so good. Can you smell it? See how dark it is? And I have my favorite cup my mommy cup so let me see if i can find it this is my favorite coffee cup that i use isn't it pretty so this is my cup and i normally have my coffee in here on the mornings or on the weekends so i already put my creamer in there and i don't drink my coffee too much with sugar so Creamer is uh, pretty much all that I need. And I'm going to go ahead and pull me up some because I need it. How does that look? So it's nothing like the first cup of coffee in the morning to get your day started. And, you know. So right now the kids are running around. You know, they're trying to get themselves together. Playing on their tablets. Which is good because it gives me a chance to... Get the breakfast together without them hovering over top of me every two seconds saying that they're hungry so i normally try to let them depending on how late we get up let them snack on something like a banana or yogurt whatever we have in the kitchen that will you know hold them over to breakfast because on sunday we pretty much eat a hearty breakfast so sometimes we can have some potatoes and sausage eggs um normally on sundays i'll get like some scrapple bacon um 
whatever's pretty much on sale at the store. You know, bacon's pretty much high these days, so I only get it when it's on sale. And my on sale is $3.99 in our local giant. Otherwise, it's almost $7 a bag. So I really don't buy bacon too much in the morning unless, you know, I see it on sale. Unless it's really something that I need and I need it for maybe one of our recipes, then I'll go ahead and splurge on it. But for the most of the time, I'm just cooking, you know, sausage, pancakes. Um, they like waffles. So we do a lot of waffles, bagels. You know, so on Sundays, we try to, you know, eat a little bit heartier because everyone's home. They'll be running in here every two minutes, you know, without having. And then the good thing also is about cooking a big breakfast on Sunday is that getting up around 10, 11 to cook, they don't have to worry about having a lunch. So they may just eat a little bit later and then I'll cook the big dinner. And then, you know, they'll pretty much be ready for dinner time. So I'm going to go ahead and start this pancake mix. <clears throat> so I normally cook about the whole box. Not the whole box. <laughs> That's a lot of pancake mix. No, about half a box. So if everyone's eating, then I'll do a half a box. And to this, I'm going to add some cold milk. Or you can add some cold water. But you know how I am. If you uh, like your waffles, if you like your pancakes more creamier or more rich, then instead of adding water, you're going to add some milk to it. So this is about half of the pancake mix. So I'm going to actually add a little bit more because with my kids we I normally make more than what they actually eat in the morning and that's because sometimes they may be hungry more than what they think they are and they don't eat as much so they'll snack on these pancakes throughout the day not necessarily having to eat them with syrup but you know just come in the kitchen grab a pancake off the stove and then, you know, that's their snack. So remember I was just saying that I don't always have to cook them lunch because when I cook the big breakfast, sometimes there's still some left over as well. So they'll just be snacking throughout the day, you know, trying to finish that up. So right now I'm going to go ahead and... So I'm going to add some cold water. And you want to add cold water to your pancake mix, not warm, not hot. Your coldness is going to help the pancake become more fluffy and it's going to just taste better. And I normally add a little bit of milk to mine too. So I don't like my pancake mix thick and I don't like it too watery. I like it in between. And what's the best part of the pancake mix, y'all? Well, what's the best part of the pancake? Who can tell me? And I normally just eyeball this part as well because we make pancakes so much. I pretty much know already how much I need to add in here. So, I just add a little bit of water, stir it up. So, already I know it's still stiff. So, I can go over here and add some more. Bring it back. So what I'm looking for is like a medium thickness. So if you want crepes, the real thin pancakes, which I love too, you want to make your pancake batter really thin. But if you want your pancakes like sort of thick, thin, then you want yours to be like how I'm about to make my batter. So you see how much water I'm adding? I'm still adding because I want, I don't want it too thick. If you make it too thick, then the pancake still will be doughy when you cook it. Or it is just, it doesn't taste that good. So I'm going to check on the bottom, on the side of the pan, on the side of the bowl. You know, just scrape that off. If you have a whisk. You can use that part. You can use the whisk to get that up. And the other little secret is you just want to try not to stir your 
batter too much because it'll make it flat. So all these little bubbles will go away. And those bubbles is what's going to help them, the pancakes rise as it cooks. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. It's getting there. But you see how it flows? So that's how I want it. That's how I want it. And the longer it sits as you're making your batches, it's going to get thick again anyway. So you just want to constantly stir it as you're waiting on the next batch of pancakes. So here's the sausage right over here. I got that going. So that's going to take a little second. Here's my griddle pan that I use. So I like to use this little flat pan here to make my pancakes. So I use this for a lot of things. I use this to make eggs. I use it to make my pancakes. When I make my scrapple in the morning, I use this. Um, when we're making sandwiches or toasting something. So this really comes in handy. I love this pot. And it's, um, it held us pretty good. We actually got this for one of our... Um, we actually got this as a wedding gift from our uncle. And it's, um, it's still doing good for us. So I'm just taking out my spatula. Moo Porter. Yeah. Hmm? So what y'all cooking this morning? What's on the menu for your Sunday breakfast? Or what are you cooking for dinner today? Because I really don't have anything to cook today. Uh, normally we do do a Sunday dinner, but today, like I said, I'm not feeling good, so I'm really not trying to be in here. And on top of that, it's summertime now, so I'm really not trying to be in here in this hot oven anyway. So that's another good thing. You know, the hotter it is, the less you want to cook. So I just try to get things right now where I don't have to really cook in the oven. I'm making this cook on a stove. But if it's our meats, you know, you got to put them in the oven to make sure they're nice and tender. But if I don't have to, I'm not about to. So I got to do the girl's hair today. And I'm really not in the mood for that either. But it needs to be done. So I try to do their hair about every two to three weeks. Especially more so in the summertime now. They're going to be sweating. But for London's, I don't have no problem doing hers because her hair is thin. So I can pretty much wash it, dry it, braid it up and go but emmy we gotta wash it blow dry it we gotta comb it out good her hair is so thick so when i do her hair i have to be like mentally <laughs> mentally prepared but it need to be done so you know i gotta do it but i need to do mine too as you can see i don't want to keep wearing these ponytails i just had some braids in my hair some nice long braids I haven't wore braids in over 15 years, so that was a nice switch up. You know how it is on the summertime. You don't want to do your hair. It's too hot. And I'm, I'm trying to get back into the gym. I'm trying to, you know, lose this baby weight from Porter and other babies that I haven't been able to lose. So I said I was going also today get up and go to the gym, but that's not happening. So, you know, it's just one of them days you think you're about to get all this stuff done and... You know your body has something else planned for you so right now we're just waiting on these sausages i'm gonna go ahead and once the sausage is halfway done then we can go ahead and put the pancakes on and then make the eggs so hopefully you guys do yours the same order so what do you normally cook first do you normally cook your meat first your pancake first your eggs first you know what order do you cook your breakfast in so we like our food hot so you cook the the, the meat first because depending on what kind of meat you get that's going to take the longest the pancakes not going to take that long because with that griddle pan i showed you i can fit four at a time depending on how big or how small i want them and then um the eggs is last so you want to make sure your eggs is last because you want your eggs to still be hot right these sausages are starting to get a nice little crisp on them and you know these are just some regular these turkey sausages. Like I said, I normally don't eat these, but this is what we had on hand. And there's nothing wrong with turkey. I just don't prefer it too much because it doesn't get crispy the way I like. So that's why I more so go with the pork sausage or the beef sausage. We do like the Polish sausages. 
and I may mix that with some sauces and peppers and put some garlic in it. Mm, it'd be so good with your potatoes on the side. So this is okay. It's just with turkey bacon and turkey sausage. It doesn't really give a good crisp like I want to. But these are doing pretty good. Here's a nice little, you know, crisp on those. So here's our pancake mix. I'm going to go ahead and turn this oven on. And with your pancakes, you want to make sure you get your pan hot first because you want to make sure that butter melts on the pan. So I just added my butter on this pan. And I'm going to move it around a little bit. But you can hear the sizzle because the pan is ready. And if you've never made pancakes before, pancakes are so easy. They are really easy. You just have to know when it's time to flip them. It's kind of like cooking meat. When you put the pancake on the pan, you want to look for the bubbles that's going to pop up from the batter. And then once the bubbles start to pop up, then you can turn it. And the best part of pancakes is, can anybody tell me? Or does anybody do this? So just take a look real quick. So I use this measuring cup as my scoop to put my pancakes on. And I'm going to just do one at a time. So that way, not too big. See how big that pancake was? Depending on how you like your pancake size, you can determine if you want silver dollars, you want medium size, you want a big one. And then look at the batter and you'll see what size pancake comes up. So you see how it's nice and runny? Wait to see how when I flip it the thickness of it so you can see on the pan there is not too thick which is good that's what you want and look at these bubbles you see those bubbles now I said not to stir your batter too much because you don't want them bubbles to die down these bubbles is what's making the pancake mix flip up and this is what you're going to look for when it's time to flip it and the main thing is you want these edges on your pancakes to be crispy like, that's the best part of the pancake is a crispy edge. When you bite into that edge and you hear that and uh, taste that crisp while you're eating it, oh my God, that is the best part. So if you don't get the crispy edge, either your pan isn't hot enough or you're not keeping it on there long enough. So, just want to leave that on there for a minute. As you can see right now, it's not really bubbling up on the edge. So I'm going to keep that, you know, a little bit longer. Say so my husband loved my breakfast. So he used, back in the day, he used to call me the breakfast queen. <laughs> Say the breakfast queen. But I love breakfast. That's one of my favorite foods. You know, just make you feel better in the morning. And there's so many good things. Like how do you not like breakfast? You got waffles, you got pancakes, you got sausage, you got eggs, you got sweet. You can do savory. You know, you can do so many things. So right now, and then to test it, so it's not done yet. So I don't want to flip it just yet because I want this to be also a golden color as well. So if you don't let your pancake sit long enough to, it's going to be really light. I'm going to try to you know, rotate my pan a little bit just to rotate it around. And you can kind of like... You know flip it up just a little bit just to peek under see this so we're getting there so we're gonna let that go just a second longer but you kind of like want to treat this like your burger or your chicken or your steak once you put it down try not to keep moving it the longer it sit the better so i'm gonna go ahead and flip it and the good thing is you want to get your spatula all the way underneath the pancake Get it under the spatula. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do that. Did you see that? Okay. Do you see this? This is what I'm talking about. You see that crispy edge. Do I, do I need to do a close-up? The crispy edge. That's what you want. Okay. That's that nice brown color. So, try to get your pancake. And then look. You don't see it's not too thick at all. It's a nice size thickness pancake. That's what I like. That's what we like in here. So try it. Let me know how it comes out. Comment down below. I'll show you the, the bottom of the pancake. But see how nice and done that is too? That's what you're looking for when you flip it. 
So let's go on to the next one. Y'all getting the hang of this? I told you it was easy. You can't go wrong. The main thing is knowing how thick you want your batter. So we're going to do another one. And you see how this size equates to that size? So based on what I'm doing, if you like yours big, make it big. If you want yours smaller, make it smaller. It's nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> you know you say stuff that make yourself laugh. <laughs> that was one of those things. But, yeah. Who likes their pancakes thick? Who likes their pancakes thin? Because the thicker you have your pancake, you're going to be full fast. If you don't want to be full fast, then you need to make your pancakes this size. So that way you can eat about three of them, depending on if you're hungry. My kids, they can eat about three of those pancakes and like I said this whole bucket this whole bowl will probably make about 15 to 20 pancakes about this size and even more depending on how much how big or how small I make them so if I'm making small dollar size then I can probably get about 30 40 pancakes because again I can fit at least one if I'm making the silver dollars, I can get at least five or six on this pan alone. And I'm going to show you guys, too, just what I mean by silver dollars, just in case you're wondering what I'm talking about. But it's coming together. It's... Okay, so we're going to check on the sausages. So... Okay. Shake them around a little bit. Just shake them around a little bit. See, this side still needs some more brownness. And you need to be an experienced cook to be able to touch with your fingers like that. But this pan is not really that hot, which is why I'm able to go in with my finger. Okay, so back to the pancake. Okay, so you see the bubbles. I just turned my pan back up. And you can tell this kind of done because of the stiffness. And again, you can take a peek. But I want it to be a little bit more browner. So this is the color that we're going for. So you would just want to try to leave it on there. Don't rush it. I know you're hungry. I know you're ready to eat. But do not rush this. You're going to flip it and all that batter. It's going to be on the underside, which it will still cook, but it will just more so taste like dough. Did y'all see that? How I put the spatula underneath the pancake and you do it fast. And then flip. And again, you can still see the crispy edge. You can still see the crispy edge. So if you're not getting that crispy edge, either your pan isn't hot enough or you need to put some more butter butter now you won't i don't know if you will get the crispy edges if you use the pan spray so i don't use the pan spray i prefer butter to make my uh food i don't know i just feel like pan spray gives it this aftertaste and i don't really like the aftertaste too much so i like to use this my good old butter or margarine if i have it it is hot outside oh my goodness i am in this kitchen and i could just Feel the heat off of my window standing over top of the stove it is like almost 80 degrees outside all right so you know what I'm gonna just do this the way I normally do because this butter is pretty much just going to be used for this right here so I normally just take my whole bit and just run it along does anyone else do this? And that way you know you cook with the whole thing. You don't have to worry about putting it piece by piece. You know it's on there. So let me, let me show you how to do another one. But this time I'm going to show you how I put more than one on the pan. So I'm going to come on this side first. See how that one's smaller? And then I'm going to come over here and put this one next. Okay. So that way you can see 
two at a time. And then how am I gonna forget to take the syrup out of the refrigerator? That is, if that's not one thing I do not like y'all is cold syrup. I can't do it. I need to have my syrup warm or hot because you you taking your hot food and putting the cold syrup on top, that does not make sense to me. It just ruins the whole food. Unless you have a microwave where you can heat it back up, but at this point, you can heat it back up, but it's still not going to taste the same with that hot pancake coming straight off the stove with some warm or hot syrup. Oh my goodness. And then the syrup, the warm syrup is going to melt the butter that you're going to put on top of your pancake or waffle. So you can't melt the butter with cold syrup. And I know a lot of people, you, you know, you do use your cold syrup, but I've always been that way. I'm going to continue to be that way. It's just something about it. So these are coming along. And if you notice, this one more so is on the edge. So that one I'm really going to not flip until it's time because I need to move it away from the edge so that way it can cook a little bit more. Normally I can get it like right in the, the center where it doesn't have to touch, but I'm cooking with you. So it's a little bit harder than I anticipated to do it that way. So we're going to get into these eggs in a second. I'm going to show you how um, I do my eggs and what I put in my eggs. And I got a secret ingredient that I put in my eggs. Shout out to one of my YouTube subscribers. I'll shout her out once I get closer to the video. So you got to give credit with due. Credit. You have to give credit where it's due. And, you know, I want to make sure I give her that proper shout out. At this point, now that they have thrown up a little bit, I'm going to take it away from the edge a little bit. Because I want to make sure that it cooks because that side was pressed up against the side I want to make sure that it's going to cook evenly okay and then I'll just also like turn the pan a little bit and then you just want to also move that butter around see just move the butter around I don't know how your pan is or what type of pan you're using to make your pancakes what i really have that i'm waiting to use is my cast iron griddle it's a two-sided griddle if you have one you know what i'm talking about but on the one side is the flat surface you can make your pancakes and put your you can have one side make your pancakes you can have the other side making your meat and then on the opposite side is a grill so when you're making hamburgers you'll have that grill mark or you know whatever that you're doing you see right here this was a perfect example of not um not cooked enough so it's not really dark enough as i would like so i'm just gonna let this one go a little bit longer so let's flip this next one are you getting the hang of flipping these pancakes ma'am are you getting the hang of them it's not hard at all. Not at hard at all. And you see that one has the crust on it. This side, because I had it touching, this side isn't as crispy as I would like because it was touching the side of the pan. So, although I can do more on the pan, I'm just going to go ahead and stick to the one at a time for, you know, demonstration purposes today. So, I'm going to show you these silver dollar ones really quick. I took the other ones and I'm, they are back here chilling on the back of the stove. So those are chilling out. And then these are the silver dollar ones. So these are a lot smaller. These are the kid size ones. So when you go to IHOP and they get the silver dollar pancakes, this is the size that they're getting. So you guys can make your own Denny's or IHOP breakfast at home. You don't always have to go out to eat breakfast. Once you know how to, you know, do the basics, basics in the house, uh, if you have a waffle machine, make a waffle. Make a Belgian waffle, get some toppings to go on top of it, get some whipped cream. Of course, you'll have your eggs, whatever meat you want. You got your coffee, your orange juice, 
and you'll be good. You don't have to, you know, you'll end up paying the money to get your ingredients to cook. But you'll be nice and full at home and you don't have to drive. But, you know, if you want to walk it all after eating all this food, you know, that'd be one of the things to do. Y'all up yet? Or y'all still in bed? Hmm. Huh? My kid's hungry. They asking me. I can just hear that door opening and shutting. So they can pretty much smell when I'm out here cooking at this point. They got the smell of vision in the room. You know, right now the smell of pancakes is going through the house. The smell of sausage. You know, whatever I'm pretty much cooking, then they'll be able to smell from the back. So that makes them even more hungrier and trying to figure out when I'm going to be done. But, you know, I hope you guys have a good day today. Um, it's a nice day to go to the pool. Right now, there's no football on. I'm so happy. Okay, my husband. I'm just enjoying these last little bit of Sundays, y'all, where, you know, we can have our free Sundays, no football on, you can watch pretty, pretty much whatever you want, so, you know, as soon as summertime comes, it's going to be football season, go skins, <laughs> don't be mad whoever's watching, you know, I'm representing the blue, but that doesn't mean anything, so let's go ahead and flip these. And they kind of remind you of like the pancakes that you get in the box at the store. You know, the ones that's frozen and you just take it out and put them in the microwave. <laughs> this is what kind of like what those are. And even still, as I made the silver dollar ones, you can still see the crunchy edge on the outside. So I really would like mine a little bit more crunchy on the outside, but it's okay. And then I'll just roll them on the edge, trying to, you know, get some of that leftover butter. But it's nothing to this pancake. I know a lot of people are scared to make them, but it's nothing to it. They say once you just get the hang of it, and the other thing is your spatula. Get it under there, doing it really fast, and flip really fast and flip so i'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these batches of pancakes cooked up so the kids can eat and then i'm gonna come back with the eggs and we're gonna you know show you how the food is looking so the kids can found the food y'all i'm trying to cook and they're coming in here stealing the pancakes so i got some more uh silver dollar ones right here and i wanted to show you this because I just wanted to show you how many I can fit on the pan at the same time. So although the kids love these, daddy loves these size too. Because they're more so like bite size. So it's easy for them to eat these versus the big ones. Even though they can't eat the big ones. So they like both. But so far, this is what we have. And like I said, look who's trying to get some more pancake. Get down. Move. But yeah. So let me show you the flip. Cause that's what you came here for, right? You wanted to see the flip. Look at that flip. Look at the flip. So what do y'all do on Sundays while you're cooking? Do you listen to music? Are you watching TV? Do you have someone you're talking to in the background? Do you have a sous chef? See, I know me prop my phone right here in front of me and I watch my show. So if I'm trying to catch up on a show or if I'm in a mood to listen to some music or if I'm watching YouTube, it's right here in front of me. And that, you know, gets me in my rhythm. So, you know, I'm good to go as long as I got something to watch or something to listen to because I don't know, me in this silence, I... I can't, I can focus, but I tend to, you know, focus a little bit more when I got something to watch or, you know, something to listen to. It just gets you into the groove and, you know, make you want to do your happy dance in the kitchen. So, tell me what you guys do in the morning to get you going on when you're cooking your dinner. What do you do to keep it going and keep your motivation in the kitchen and, you know, tell me what your routine is. Y'all ready to eat? I was I was talking to the the YouTube family, not y'all. <laughs> I said y'all ready to eat, and Emmy's saying yes. I'm I'm talking to you guys on my channel, on our channel. Are you all ready to eat? Have you had breakfast yet? 
So now we're on the final stretch. So we have the pancakes here. Pancakes are done. So you see I have half of the silver dollar ones, half of the regular pancakes. Um, sausage is over here. And then now I'm moving on to the eggs. So when you cook eggs, each is on. You can either go simple with the salt and pepper, put some butter, you know, that's the simple safe route. Or if you want to experiment with your eggs or, you know, want a little bit of extra kick, a little bit of extra flavor, here's another version. So with my eggs, I put a little bit of onion powder because think of it, it may sound a little weird, but don't you eat omelets? When you eat omelets, you eat onions in your eggs. So this is a little bit of onion powder. Just think of it like you're eating an omelet when you start to experiment with your eggs and what ingredients you put in. So I learned a little trick. I normally don't put my pepper and my eggs into the end because I don't want the color of the eggs to turn dark as I'm cooking them. Now, that's not to say that this ingredient that I'm getting ready to put in, yes, is a little dark, but I need the flavor. So, I'm going to give at this time special shout out to Antoinette Young from Food from the Soul. I was watching her channel a long time ago and she would always make these gravies and one of the ingredients that she always used was some oyster soles. So although she never made the eggs with the oyster soles, I always wanted to try this and I did. Not necessarily in my eggs first, but it's good in gravies, it's good in anything like Chinese dishes, dishes, Japanese dishes. It gives it that curry out <clears throat> flavor. And this is like a, a salty little kick to it, but it's like a, a taste to it. Um, if you ever had like beef and broccoli, it's kind of like that flavor in the background. But this, I tried it in my eggs one day. Something just told me to try it. You know, me being me, just gotta be doing the most extra. But y'all, let me tell you, it was the best thing ever. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this. It's so good. Don't sleep on this. I'm trying to tell you. If you like experimenting with foods but not too much out the box, start out here. And then this way you don't need to add salt because this oyster sauce is sort of, well, is the salt substitute in your eggs. Now, I'm not going to, I don't have any cheese right now. I do like cheese in my eggs as well. But... I'm not going to do that today. If you want to add a little bit of cream in your eggs, you can. Now, I'm going to cook my eggs right here on this griddle top as well. And I was just telling you that, you know, I've pretty much been doing a lot of things on here lately. And it's, it's pretty much easy. I have a certain spatula, though, that I use. So that way the eggs won't stick to the pan. But we're going to get these... You know, mixed up good. Make sure you get all them egg whites incorporated. So my husband, like I said, doesn't like eggs. So pretty much me and the kids um, are just waiting on this step to eat. But normally if he sleep right now, he would be eating. So he has his pancakes and sausage over here on the side. So we normally just give him his plate first. And then I'll cook the eggs. Um, and then we'll eat. So as you see, I'm just... Still mixing this. Just want to make sure it's, you know, mix real good. So everybody likes their eggs different. So today I'm doing a scrambled egg. And I got my butter. So my butter is still melted right here from my pancakes. Which is good because whoever wants to still put a little bit more butter on your pancakes. I mean, yeah, after the fact, you can. So, this is to make sure that the eggs, the butter. Okay. So, this step right here is to make sure that the eggs don't stick to the pan. And this is my little special spatula. Isn't this cute, y'all? 
I got this from the dollar store. And look, everything is correlating with my color today, this blue. It's more like a teal, but it's silicone and it does not stick. So as I'm cooking eggs, it's perfect. And that's what I don't, you know, I want something that's going to pretty much help me cook these eggs good with no problem. And I don't have to worry about the eggs sticking to the pan and, you know, none of that. So I'm going to actually turn this heat up a little bit. So I don't like my eggs, my scrambled eggs too hard. I kind of like it in the, the semi a little wet, but not watery. You know what I mean? I don't want them done done, but I don't want them not done. So I'm going to say medium well. That's how I cook my scrambled eggs. So how do you guys like your scrambled eggs? And at this point, I like to cook them more slow, especially if I had some cheese in here. I will be cooking this slow to make sure the cheese gets incorporated. But I don't know, lately too, sometimes I don't really mind the cheese inside, you know, me seeing the actual cheese inside. So if I had like some shredded cheese, I would sprinkle that right on top and just mix it all around. So again, if you've never <coughs> made eggs or... Eggs is really simple. This is also one of the first foods that you would learn how to cook. So I'm going to actually take that off. And just push it to the sides. You don't want to, you know, like scramble it up. Because you still want your egg to be whole. You must still want to see chunks of egg. And this is six eggs. So for my family, I can do six large eggs. And this would be enough for me and the kids. If Amy was just asking me if I had put cheese in the eggs today, I was telling her, no, not today. I don't have any today, so we just going to just work what we have. And as you see, I'm just still pushing it from the outer to the middle. And just keep it going. You see how what I'm saying, the spatula? You see how it's not leaving any like residue? on the bottom of the pan it's so easy to cook with which is why i love this thing you know it's nothing like finding or having a kitchen utensil that you love in the kitchen and then when you can't find it or it breaks or messes up you know you be mad because you just feel like that was your tool that helped you cook good and then when you don't have it anymore it's like oh um, i gotta find it again or you know see what out see what else is out there see look at them eggs y'all but you see how that six eggs still doesn't look like six eggs it looks like this is about maybe three or four not six So, you know, when you think something is a lot, it really isn't. The egg is still holding its shape. It's not all broken up. You can still see, you know, the shape of the egg. And then once we're done, then I'm going to add the pepper on top. Because you see, it's not, it still has a yellow, a yellow color to it. It's still nice and yellow. And it's not hacked into like a million and one, <laughs> million and one pieces. See, don't that look good, y'all? I wish we had smell it too. If you're still cooking, if I did cut the eggs off at this point, they will still continue to cook. So if you feel like this is your style of eggs texture, you know, it's not dry, it's still moist enough for you, you can cut it off and it'll still cook. And that way, by the time you finish fixing your food, um, it'll be okay. This is perfect. And then now I'm going to go ahead and add the pepper on top. 
and that way it doesn't look you know I added a little bit too much in that section but it doesn't look all crazy the cooking process doesn't look all crazy so I'm gonna go ahead and plate this up and I'm gonna show you what it's looking like what are you doing? we ready to eat All right, you guys, so this is the end result. So, breakfast for the champions. So, this is the finished plate. I'm going to go ahead and plate up the kids' food. But we got the eggs. Here's all the pancakes. How do those look? So, they're all stacked up. You can see each one, how it's all looking consistent. And then we got the silver dollar ones here. So these are like the bite sized portions. So the kids have already ate a ton of those. And then we got the sausage links. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs, a like, subscribe, comment, and come back to our channel for another edition of Into the Woods. See y'all later. Are you finished? Huh? So you just ate up all the pancakes. Oh, you just ate them all. You just ate about six of those. And you're still eating. Are you going to eat them all? Huh? Oh. Yes. What that mean? Uh -huh. Look. Uh -huh. Eat your food. Are you swallowing or eating it? Uh -huh. Are you swallowing them or eating? Uh -huh. Huh?